Hello, it's me again, der Bayer, and we are back in our automation luxury campaign with Mike Motors in 1963. Again, we are starting with a bit of background story, while we take a ride in BMG with the brand new Bramble, a sporty premium sedan from our last episode. Thousands of Mike Motors cars have already been downloaded from the Beam mod repository and are spreading like a virus. The Bramble has recently been added as well, so take a look if you want to try it out. By the way, After analyzing the last video with the extensive track testing and seeing that many people skipped it, I will move this section out of the main campaign videos and rather have the hot lap section and outtakes in separate videos. Those uncommented videos will be released a few days after each regular episode. Coming back to the Bramble. We have just released it, with the target to be homologated for racing. Therefore we need to build 1000 cars within one year and it looks like we will be able to do it. Once we have produced enough cars, we will build a Group 2 spec touring car out of it. We'll see how this turns out. One major flaw can easily be seen after a few meters of track testing. We still don't have mounted limited slip differentials and our drivers will hate us for this. And probably all the beam players too. I will make sure that this never happens again and cut less corners in the future. But most importantly, it is time for a new flagship as a successor to the Mark II. And this model line will be called the Claris from now on. While the Mark II was well received in the market, the design was less elegant than the Mark I. Early customers would like us to go back to the roots. So let's try to create something a bit more iconic within this episode, something that really stands out from the masses. And with the Bramble being the lower end of the model range, it is also time to build the ultimate luxury trim in a limited production version. This one will also get a new engine. I will see if I can get a proper V16 justified for it. I hope the luxury premium market is already large enough to make it not a complete financial disaster. At least we have the factory for it already. The tiny workshop where the company has been started and the first Mark 1s have been assembled. We will also continue with our general expansion. So the Bramble needs more diverse trims and maybe we can expand the production facilities already. Also, I want to get the first Mike Motors engine factory down, which will produce the inline 6 engine and raise our margins. Currently, we are not earning a lot of money with the Bramble, because the engine is basically responsible for half of the car cost. An engine factory should help us to shovel in some money. This money can be used for more marketing, more R&D and maybe, just maybe, to make the cars more reliable. After all, our goal is to build the best and most prestigious cars in the world. I doubt they are the best when they are constantly falling apart. As of now, Mike Motors is on a strong upwards trend and the introduction of the Bramble certainly will contribute to the growth plan. We will cover more markets, stay on the slightly overpriced side and try to conserve the slowly building brand legacy. Let's get to work. So here we are for a quick status report. We have 93 million in the banks, which is roughly the company valuation. That means our assets and our loans will basically balance themselves out and we have made a big profit but we are still selling basically pre-orders of um, mostly the Bramble. So here our pre-orders are slowly being reduced. For the Mark II we still have problems to keep up with production so maybe an expansion is necessary there for the Claris, the follow-up version. Things are looking good in general. We also have now very smooth suspension available so let's try to use that for the next version. But first of all, let's take a, also a look at where we actually sell our cars. So here we see we are basically selling into the bottom right corner, which means all of the demographics which have a bit of money. And let's try to increase our overall market share. So we are still at very low shares here, mostly due to too low production and too high prices. We will keep with the high prices side, of course. So I'd say let's get going. So when we also take a look at the Bramble, we see that we have currently 326 cars sold of the 1000 we need to produce within this year. Um, we are on a good path, but it's not yet time to build a racing version. So let's start with the Claris instead. So this will be our base model. I will try to make it not look like a Citroen, um, not too much at least, which is very hard with this very iconic body shape. 
problem of this body shape is that we don't have a coupe version of this anymore. So the Grand Touring stuff probably is a bit lacking, but yeah, we'll have to stick with it and see how it goes. It just has to be good enough so that we can offset the body type penalty. The basic setup of the Cleres will stay identical. We still don't produce or sell enough of it to justify monocoque production, so we have to stick with ladder, but I hope to change that at some point in the future. Eight liter V16, we, I try to go for overhead cam, even though the familiarity is not that good. Um, this engine does not have to be very efficient in production because we are only selling a few and to a demographic with a lot of money. So it will just diminish our margin a bit, but it's mostly a prestige project for us anyway. So let's see if we can do it. So the engine in general is pretty basic, uh, I'm still not fully done with tuning, so we need to get the compression right, but then we are looking decent, yeah. more than 250 horsepower from this beauty here. Um, we have upgraded to four barrel carbs, um, we went with standard mid intake and cast low headers i think that's the best choice and maybe we make it a little quite more quiet so it's not the most quiet engine i've produced so far because it's larger has larger exhausts but i think it's still fine so let's see how this one sounds I think it's all right. Didn't expect the headers to glow. Um, it's not. It doesn't have so much power for the sheer size of it. But yeah, if it wants to glow, let it glow. All right, I'm through for the first time and yeah, the design is, yeah, I cannot get the Citroen away, but I hope it's iconic enough um, and fits the brand. So I'm, I'm quite happy with it. The general setup again is quite typical for our um, top model line. So here we have a automatic gearbox, first time ever clutch limited slip uh, differential, medium tires so that we have somewhat good handling and good comfort, um, max um, for all the prestige of course, then um, solid disc brakes, I think I never had solid disc brakes so far, um, so it's quite weird that I have zero familiarity, I thought that the Bramble had them already. Um, yeah, but that's the way it is. Aero is nothing special. Um, for the interior, so far we are here with handmade and phonograph. For the ultimate trim, I will increase the quality quite a bit. Uh, material cost 8k, I think that's enough. Um, and here, hydraulic, ball steering, advanced safety, pretty straightforward. 
and also new the hydro springs so this will be proper comfortable yeah it should be quite boaty again also can invest the quality here and then i think we're pretty good so comfort is through the roof prestige is excellent let's take a look at our competitors here in the market drivability we're almost there uh, we have quite a heavy car so that's fine sportiness nothing competitors 0 0.6 so they crush us there um comfort we crush them so that's the important one also prestige we crush them safety well, not so much but but i'm still on a ladder chassis so nothing i can do here and the rest is not that important um, i'm super smooth the competitors are not yeah um, so that's the luxury premium stuff they have proper budget let's take a look yeah 266k even more in uh, Gasmia so we can sell this for 200k or something so that's the premium model let's take a look here it says I it says I'm selling zero zero is probably not enough okay with 100k we get one sale maybe we start with that as an introduction price and then see how we can develop the market So the normal sedan will be just a bit simpler and of course we'll get a different engine it will only get a v12 but we will also make a new iteration of that one i guess oh yeah it's already 13 years old yeah so that's our v12 um, it will have a bit less power than the ultimate model 220 horsepower that's more than enough let's make it more quiet and then basically keep what we had um, with the ultimate or definitely will reduce the quality here maybe not give it the phonograph And maybe also try to not use the most fancy suspension. No, I think it needs the fancy suspension. Somehow this is also quite a bit heavier. And understeering a lot more. I think 30k was a lot less than what we had previously so we need to up the price um, to around 40 but I will think of that when it's time and we will ditch the GT for this one and we'll have just the luxury convertible okay that's actually a problem I didn't check it but then I think it's pretty clear that we don't have Four seats should still be good enough there is not so much competition in the luxury market so let's choose this one yeah from my point of view there would be space or at least a plus two but i don't think we have that no so unfortunately not so we will just but still have really really good desirability so i don't really care so we just made sure that i have the automatic soft top selected so that it is a bit more comfortable but in general that's it and it's quite all right the roll angle is through the roof but it's fine okay that's our lineup and let's see what we can do 84 months is definitely too much so 
we will give it some reliability, um, but not make it completely shit again. So how much time do we want this to take? Five years, I would say, is the absolute maximum. Yeah, maybe like this, 23 million, we can afford that. But we have two more engines and one of them is completely new. Oh, 120. All right, the top end is not the problem, the family it is. I should, could reduce a bit of family quality there and I will do that. So we started at 135. Then we go four minus three there. Yep, 103, 30%. So we need a new engine contract for that because the V12 will be in the first one, the I6 will be in the other one, and we need one more. Okay, 17,000 for an engine, that's fine. We make it a lot more reliable, it will be expensive, still, but that's good as well. 10k for an engine, all right, at some point we have to fix this as well and do it ourselves. Reload those cars, or well, at least the ultimate version, now that I have changed the engine. So now for the factory, um, I will go into the Mark II factory, which is the small one, and I will select the small workshop for the limited production version. So only the ultimate will be done here, and we will produce these two in our normal factory. One step bigger, I guess, or two, oh, come on. And let's add the leather works as well. Yeah, it's just that the production can't keep up, so let's go for let's go for a small two, I guess. So I can go up to 2.5 shifts in general to and, and still get engines from our contract. A bit more automation. Okay, let's take a look now. Forecast is looking decent, but it has the wrong prices. Okay, now that's a forecast. Estimation around one shift. I just hope that I actually sell a few of the ultimate. Margins are decent. Let's take a look at the budgets. They change over time. So luxury 44k, I sell at 40 and convertible luxury 50 and I sell at 45. Okay, so that means project should be ready. Sign off. So with the factory I'm at one shift estimation. Um, that means I have room for expansion. Um, even so when the markets grow, don't have to build a new factory. So feeling comf comfortable with that and else yeah the only thing that hurts maybe is that we lose the GT market a bit but um, I think it's still fine project is quite expensive for our taste um, but I think we need to do this to be competitive I will not take a loan out for this one but yeah I think I'm done Let's agree. That's one thing done. Now it's also time to uh, wait until we have 1000 sales of the Bramble. And from there on we can build, just for fun, the Group 2 racing version. Okay, we had some weird effect going on. Um, didn't sell any Brambles at some point. And I don't know why. <laughs> so we will miss the 1963 racing season, it looks like. 
772 sales. Yeah, the season is basically over once we get um, start to work on the car. We are still limited in stuff with the Bramble Factory, so that's why we are so much behind, but we are catching up on our sales. And we have, oh, I missed one month, but now it's time to start to work on the Bramble, on the racing version. So first of all, I will just add the racing trim to the Bramble. And once that is done, I will actually work on the facelift and add more trims to the Bramble. But that will probably only happen in the next episode. And the way I do this is basically um, but, uh, to deselect the modification for the sedan. So it will still stay the same. And I will just build the Group 2 version on top of that. The good thing about Group 1 and Group 2 is that it's basically production cars. So in the beginning of touring car racing in the 60s, there was not a lot you could do. Um, you also didn't have to reduce the weight a lot. Um, you were allowed to be 3% below the production weight um, by removing bumpers and so on, or removing some interior panels, but you could not remove all of the seats and stuff like that. So I will also not do that. I will just do what is possible. And that is Let's start with the engine. One thing what was already pretty bad was the capacity. So the um, group regulations from the FIA didn't have a group for 3.6, so we would be in the 4 liter class. So we would already be down on power maybe um, compared to other cars, but that's the way it is. Um, it was not properly planned, this project. Um, what can we do with the engine? We can choose any piston we like for group two. Group one would not have been possible, group two, yes. Um, piston, I would also say that means con rods. We can replace all springs in the car. This also means valve springs. We can change camshafts. We can change the compression by, for example, mounting different head gaskets. Any part may be finished off. That means material may be removed for improvement. Maybe we can just invest a bit of quality in the head to polish it and things like that. Um, the number of carburetors must stay. The size may change but the same principle, so we cannot change the carburetor type. The air filter may be removed or changed, and we can change ignition coil and distributor, gives us opportunity to change ignition timing. The exhaust manifold, unfortunately, is not free, so we have to stick to our crappy cast manifolds. Mufflers are free, but still noise dampening is necessary. So let's see how we do this. So first of all, corn rods and pistons will be changed. The question is, does that really help? Because yeah, it was basically already optimized for this kind of RPM and I cannot choose the forge crank. So I will maybe just stick with what I have and just polish stuff a bit and polishing just give it a little bit of quality. Now the crank is good or better. Uh, I go for forge. Uh, can at least rev a little bit more then cam profile and springs. Uh, yeah, we need to polish the head, of course. Then the carburetor is stick to the triple carb, um, and we can change the intake manifold. For the fuel tap, I think we have to stick with what's available, but I can make the ignition more advanced. And I can make it run a bit more rich. Compression is already quite fine. A bit larger carb. Had a, yeah, it must say the same, so 38, I probably have to stick with it. I would have liked to increase it a slight bit, but yeah, let's stick with it. Exhaust may be increased. Get a bit more out of this, and I will get rid of one buffet muffler, and then Maybe we can also polish a little bit here. Let's stick with this 195 horsepower for this one. That's the engine. And now for the car itself. Oh. 
All right, so let's run it in Gasmian white with a blue bonnet and see what we can change about the car. So for the car, no, there's not much we can do. Gearbox must stay the same. Also differential must stay the same, unfortunately. We can change basically anything regarding suspension. Dampers, all springs, anti-roll bars. We can change the tires, but the rim dimensions must stay and the track must stay the same, so there's not much we can do. And we probably also have to go for bias ply because there's no proper racing tires for radials yet. Um, brake pads are free, brake power is free, principle must stay the same, so we'll see uh, what we can do there. Ground clearance must at least be 10 centimeters, but I think that will not be a problem. Back to cross ply, we had 185s, and now we have the problem that um, we are not allowed to choose the 185s because of the huge rims we have on there. So 16 inch was probably a bit over the top. Um, we can go for a bit of quality. Still, it doesn't allow me to do anything proper here. We can increase tire size a bit. Rim is staying the same. Yeah, still 155, that's <laughs> no. Um, Please excuse me, I have to reduce the rim size by one click and then we go for 175 even if it's one less than I would like to have. Yeah, the production model with 15 inches would have been more reasonable. Okay, I thought I had solid disc and I still didn't gain any familiarity from it. Proper low. So we cannot go any lower, I guess. And with this, I think we have a pretty good tune. Yeah, gearing is also not very good um, for this kind of car, but that's the way it is. All right, there we are. This is our Group 2 version. This will represent the brand in racing. Um, it will hopefully not break down all of the time. If it is successful, maybe um, there will be more racing versions of cars available in the future. If it is not, we'll see what we do to promote the brand. To make it realistic, we'll sign this off um, as the works team version, basically, and we will spend some money on it. Um, but we will also make it pretty cheap, I guess. Okay, it looked like I have to revise the basic sedan. I will not do anything major with it. I will not change anything. Fortunately, it does not take too much time. We will also miss the 1964 season, but for 1965 we are ready with this one and then we will work on the other trims. Okay, now we see I'm not really familiar with the um, trim and variant system here. I made a mistake and I replaced my production version of the engine. So I have to revert and make an actual new variant. And then we should also be able to not revise the sedan, the production version. So let's see. All right, now that I've set the engines up properly, it's all working out. Okay, it will take 20 months, which is almost good enough. Okay, now there's an update. So I had 18 months, I think, for the engine. Let's learn at least a bit from our racing engagements and have the just the normal sedan in the normal factory and have the racing world workshop a new one, just a tiny one. And here we, of course, don't need any quality and no workers because we will not actually produce 
it we will just produce it for one month and then kill it all right that's the racing version ready Car engine one month i can still extend it by one month excellent and we're ready in march 1965 so that's good 11 million for this racing project <laughs> maybe a bit much but uh, yeah let's do it all right and then um i let this run until we have the racing version ready and see if we can optimize a bit in our marketing and r d yeah we certainly can spend a bit more so our research pie is a bit small um so let's extend this bit also marketing can be extended we have pretty good awareness though in, in this right part but um, maybe now that we are racing we can spend a bit more on sports as well so i would say we double our r d investments to two million and for marketing let's see yeah we have 620,000. Let's get up to at least um, 400k, I guess. And I would say we can also start with reliability marketing. Doesn't make too much of a difference for our target markets, but we are doing it now. Yeah, basically doubled our budget there as well. Let's take a look now at uh, our pre-order situation. So the Grand Touring is still selling quite well. And we're, yeah, we are at two shifts already, so we cannot do a lot about it. So what I do is I raise the price, of course. Yeah, it's too cheap. The Bramble is still doing good, still reducing pre-orders, so no change needed here. People are pre-ordering the Group 2 car. It's not a production model. If they want it, if they want to have a factory car. All of the customer teams want the factory car and, and it looks like they <laughs> will crash quite a few of those. Oh, Claire, this factory has a big problem. High difficulty, small issue. Okay, so it's not a big problem. Discovery chance is quite low, so we already have a reputation problem, so let's do a quiet recall. So what we will do is, um, with the pre-orders, we just collect what we get until the launch and then we don't accept new pre-orders, we just sell off. And And there we are. So, no new pre-orders for the Group 2. So we have 500 cars they want to buy. And, and I wonder where they are going. They're probably going into, into muscle and sport. But they're pretty, <laughs> they're so bad, these cars. They don't pause the pre-orders and I don't know why. I have clicked to not take any more pre-orders and they still want more cars. So I will pause the production and I will kill it in the next facelift. They are still pre-ordering it. Okay, so what I do is I change the price to something insane and then they will probably stop. And then let's work on a quick facelift of the Bramble and try to get a few more trims. Uh, I definitely need a coupe variant and to go more into the Grand Touring market. I add the uh, limited uh, slip diff, but that's probably the only change. Uh, Max is also nice. Upgrade the radio. Oh, new dampers.
Right, so the GT market currently does not yet like it too much. So for this one I probably go for luxury then. More into reliability as well. Three years. It's a bit long. So deselect the racing workshop again and go into the factory to upgrade this. Or oh, we are bold and go for the medium one and then add the steel presses later. Yeah, that's the problem. We still need to get the engine factory down, so let's go for small three. The cars are not so expensive anymore to produce, so it's time to pay them. Yeah, I need a new engine facelift just to update the factory configuration, I guess. I will choose a medium plot just to be sure to be safe for future expansion. Small one is just about the right size. And that brings the engine cost down significantly. Oh, look at those profits already. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I think we are playing with the big boys now. It's not enough, I guess. We need to upgrade. Okay, small three engine factory is already necessary. And then, now let's see if we can actually afford this. Okay, this is now a bit too much. Um, so let's turn it down a notch but still stay on a nice and high price. So let's go with this. Um, it's quite bold. Right, that's quite a project, I would say. 178 million, that's almost as much as we are worth. 32 months. I'd like to play it safe and at least take 40% with a loan. And let's sign it off. So first of all, we have big issues with the production of the Mark II. We cannot keep up. Um, I need to raise the prices there. We are doing well with the sedan, still selling 350 per month. So news, Advisia has passed the ban on leaded fuel. I hope I don't forget about that. That's in 10 years already. Fruinia as well. Clearus is ready. V16 engine is done. V12 engine is done. Excellent news. Um, let's take a look at the pre-order situation. Oh, God, I should have paid attention to this. So, ultimate version is being ordered. That's good. Not many, but it's there. Sedan through the roof. Convertible going through the roof now. So let's see what happens when we have one more month. Stabilizing going down. The, we will have an overproduction of the ultimate, but we will just kill it um, at some point. And here we are. I would say one more tick just to see how many we actually build. And there we go. Many, many deliveries of the Bramble. We are overproducing a lot. But yeah, the markets need to be developed. And we will see if we can keep up this level of production. 
currently at 1.6 shifts. So that's um, quite good. So maybe we limit it at 1.2 for now, so that we sell off our pre-orders a bit slower. But in general, it's looking good. We have still massive um, pre-orders for the sedan of the Claris. And we are, oh God, uh, we're earning a bit of money now. All right. Um, I have now time to think about what I do with that money and you have time to watch other videos. This was the end of this episode. Thanks again for watching. See you again next time and bye bye.